Hey everybody, welcome to my next uh, free tutorial Friday, which is being posted on a Wednesday this week because I'm traveling to Toronto tomorrow, and so I'm posting it early. Um, let's see, uh, what are we going to do this week? Well, I posted this on my Facebook page and people seem to like it, so uh, there were a couple questions about how to do it. And so I, I of course, didn't record the first version I did. Uh, which was a different sketch, and so I went, jumped in and did this one. Uh, the whole thing takes about 34, 35 minutes, I think. Uh, it's double time uh, sped up here. So you can see I wasn't even really painting that fast, otherwise the double time would look quicker. Um, so you start with a line drawing, and if you put a lot of time into a line drawing, like this one probably took me, I don't know, I wasn't trying to draw very fast, but um, maybe an hour, hour and a 15 minutes maybe. Um, it was just a, it was an evening sketch at home on the coffee, you know kitchen table with the old sketchbook out, that kind of thing, just ballpoint pen, um, all freehand with the exception of some ellipse guides for the wheels. So if you spend a lot of time and you do a, a nice line drawing, it doesn't matter how long they take, but if you have a line drawing you like and you want to <laughs> sort of make it a little more presentable or a little bit more appealing, this is a really quick way to do it. Um, you scan the line drawing, and all I've done is put my line drawing on the top of my layer stack, and I have uh, put it to multiply, and then I put a layer below it, and the layer below it, and I'm going to have several layers, is where I'm going to block in a little bit of value, and then we're going to colorize it a little bit. So you can see I've just got a, a hard edge brush here, and um, I have it set to 100% opacity, but it has pressure sensitivity turned on. Uh, I think both for uh, opacity and flow, so it, a lot of pressure sensitivity. So allows me with, you know, a dark value chosen to lightly touch the. Uh, I'm working on, on a Cintiq, and so I can lightly put in value, or I can press harder, of course, and get more value. So it just gives me more range with one brush. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, you'll see I'm going to cheat the lighting around here a little bit. Uh, I'm basically going to work with the lighting that I already have in my drawing, which you know, a lot of times when I do a line drawing, I just cast a shadow straight down. And to, I do that because it helps explain the top view of the vehicle. So you can see there's a shadow there on the ground. Um, it isn't the best, uh, in a lot of cases, the top straight down lighting isn't the best for maybe showing the form of the vehicle. But I think it's worth a try to just leave it in that position um, because to move it would be a lot of would be a hassle, at least to move it accurately. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat it a little bit and let a little bit of the light poke into the this rear wheel because it has a little bit of a dish to it. But I'm not going to scoot the shadow over. So um, you know, also I'm going to do generally soft lighting on the vehicle where I'm not casting a lot of shadows, hard shadows on it. Um, so it's a bit stylized. I am casting shadows though across. Like see that little part along the bottom there, right where I'm painting, just below that spot. There's a cast shadow of this upper container for the back of the vehicle, casting a shadow on that little engine pod there, or whatever it is, sticking out. And um, so, ideally, right, your lighting should match your shadow. So if I have a hard edge shadow, it means I have direct sunlight um, in this case, which means I should get some really strong, you know, contrasting shadows, etc. So. I'm going to cheat that a little bit and do sort of softer shadows on the vehicle itself because it just takes too long to plot all those shadows, especially when you're just trying to do a quick sketch. And so all of this is just on one layer and, you know, moving around the vehicle, thinking about the forms. Now if you've taken the time to do a nice line drawing, you already have all the sections, which makes your rendering really easy. So here wherever I have a vertical surface, of course, it receives uh, less light, which is really a bad lighting scenario for a vertical surface to light it directly from above. Um, so again, this is where I'm taking a little bit of artistic license. But I'm trying to again establish that one, two, three, uh, meaning my if I have a three, if I can see three sides of an object, I want number one side is in the light, which is everything across the top and on the top of the little side pod there. And then everything that's vertical, right, in this case would be my number two side. And then that chamfer there on that container is really our shadow side and the entire chassis below it. And so the number three side is the shadow side. And so if you've watched my DVDs, you know what I'm talking about. Um, 
And so there's a couple little subtle forms there. But you see it's all pretty pretty basic, just one brush and uh, opacity set to the same. And all I usually do is pick the colors, well, no colors yet, but the values get picked right out of the illustration. So it's very minimal Photoshop effort. Um, and I'm gonna make another layer and set this to multiply. And this is where I, I like the, the texture of the brushwork. I like the texture of the sketch showing through and I didn't wanna lose that. Um, so I don't want to paint over it. See, my line drawing is always on the top. Um, but I wanted to push the contrast a bit more. So I'm going in now with an airbrush and just trying to get those cylindrical tires to read as being a bit more cylindrical by pushing the core shadow a bit and the shadow side. And I'm not really spending a lot of time worrying about right the value graphics of everything meaning is that is the wheel there a bright white or is the tire there really black i didn't do a lot of that in this sketch this sketch is really just about making it look a little bit more three-dimensional and then um, we're going to play a little bit with color and that's it uh, but you could do it you could easily go back in and, and play with graphics so let's say i wanted to make that wheel brighter i would probably then select those wheels and put them on a separate layer and do a levels adjustment so it keeps all the form that's reading but I could change the overall value. I could do the same with the tire. I could select the tire, put it on a separate layer and then do a levels adjustment and push it to a whole darker part of the value scale. So maybe the brightest bright on the top of the wheel you know is going to go to like a six and then you know the shadow side goes to like an eight so it's a really dark dark gray or almost black. In this case, I'm not really worrying about it much. There's a little bit of value change there, but I'm not spending a lot of time on that. It's really treated more like it's kind of all primer gray, except the tires are just a tick darker, um, and some of these little cutouts and scoops, but um, and the window, you can see, is like a tinted dark class. I'm also not going to do reflections on the window. It works well in a sketch. Just make the, the glass a little darker so you can see the graphic of the window shape. So oh, uh, thank you, too, to those of you who sent me emails saying they went out and, and bought books after watching the YouTube channel. That's a huge help. Um, if you haven't figured it out, that's how I can afford to do these um, and give them away for now is uh, with your help. So uh, if you can afford it, greatly appreciated. Um, and if you can't, put it in the back of your mind someday when you can. Okay, cool. So here we go. So do some color. So it's really almost it for all the value. Um, so what I've done is I grabbed a yellow sort of old, a scan of old piece of paper and I threw it in there and put it on multiply actually and here I'm colorizing my line drawing. So I went to my line drawing and did command U colorize so I made it a warm line drawing instead of that black ballpoint and now I also I'm going to try to add a background. And if you noticed, it was really, it was pretty quick. Probably should have slowed it down. But the blue is just the same paper um, material. I just inverted, the, I just shifted the color. And it's actually set to color. Um, and it's, it's an interesting point. And here I just made a quick selection. If you have a nice line drawing and it sort of seals off your silhouette, you can just make a quick selection with the magic wand tool. And I put in a little background gradation. So that that's to help hold the top. So uh, I know the top is going to be bright. So basically the value of my vehicle goes from light at the top to dark at the bottom. So you do the reverse with your background. The, make the background go dark at the top, light at the bottom. Okay, and then you have the contrast where you need it. So I know across the silhouette at the top, right where it's going to be brighter, I would like the background to be darker. So that's, why, that's how it works. Um, of course we have a dark shadow and dark tires against the lighter ground. So those that already shows up. So what I was saying is my, my beige layer of the paper is set to multiply. The one below it is set to color. And color doesn't shift uh, anything that's white. So uh, right at the beginning of that, when I loaded in that paper, you saw that it only shifted the values that I had painted blue. So it's kind of nice because then the light surfaces where I had no value, right, weren't colorized because they were white, the original white paper. And then when I put the yellow paper on top, it actually shifted those areas to yellow. So that's how I get this little color shift 
uh, this temperature shift, I should say, between this yellow and blue. And it, the blue is only affecting where I have value. Okay, and then on the very top now, what I have is a color dodge layer. So like my other tutorials, I've set a new layer on top, double click it, turn off those two boxes you see me always do for the compositing method. So it will affect all the uh, pixels everywhere on the canvas below. And that allows me to, if I overpaint, right, and push it too far, I can just erase it like I did there. And I went in and I just brightened up the top surface a little bit. So it was a little brighter than the ground plane. And my tires look a little too dark for the kind of feel I want for this sketch. And we're actually getting close to being done. Uh, it's only a 17 minute tutorial this week. We're up around, I don't know, minute 12, 11, 12. Okay, so you saw that ellipse magically appear uh, without using a path or anything. And what I did there is I'm using a Cintiq. So I grabbed my ellipse guide and I know what ellipse I used there. And I know what ellipse I used at the front. Uh, the rear wheel is like a 50 degree ellipse. The front wheel was a 35. And so I just put my ellipse guide on it. And it didn't matter what size because I knew I could size it after. But I lined up the minor axis as best I could to my line drawing. Grabbed a, a paintbrush and just, you know, drew a little quick ellipse. And I'm going to use that for a little uh, painting, a little color stripe on the rim just to give it a little color accent and define and, and separate the tire from the wheel because I'm not really doing it with value that much you know when I look back at this now I'd probably make those wheels a bit brighter compared to the tire probably go darker on the tire more you know brighter on the wheel itself so here I've got the one at the front and I'm gonna size that it's already the right degree so it should line up and I'm just gonna put a little color stripe on the outside of that and then I'm going to add a little, uh, you see on the previous one I added a layer mask. I just copied that one and I'm going to add a second one up there. And this is underneath my color dodge layer so you see that it's still highlighting the edges. Okay, and I turned on preserve transparency and I'm darkening it down to a darker orange and I even picked a little bit of that wheel the tire color just to push it I didn't want it it should really just be disappearing I didn't want to have to go in there and erase it it's still just the sketch so I just uh, painted the same as the tire and let it disappear and I've decided I'm going to add another one here at the back uh, I also had a layer mask on that one where I was kind of erasing and hiding the far side of the bigger stripe so I just hit shift and click in your layer mask and that will deactivate it and see the red X there and I just dropped it inside, turned on preserve transparency, changed the scale, right? It would be the same degree ellipse, just a different size, and darkened it down. Okay, now into the final details, and it's almost done. So you can see it's a pretty quick process. Um, treating it more like you would do, let's say with traditional media, this would be how you would do like a watercolor wash over a line drawing. So say I had done this line drawing on a heavyweight paper and I could use wet media on it. <laughs> this would be a way I could do it either with markers or watercolor, right? Because markers are basically the permanent version of watercolor. And you could work translucently and you still let all your paper show through, you let your line drawing show through. And what I'm doing here is I put a little graphic on the side of this, just some, my armor word, which is still the book I'm thinking about someday for all those sci-fi suits that I did. Um, Anyway, I knew it was desperate for a, a name to stick on the side of this, so that's what popped into my head. And I'm just outlining those things uh, with a little bit of orange, just to give it a bit of an accent, but I don't want it to dominate. So I'm going to play around with the compositing setting here. I'm going to try hard light, try color, and ultimately I think I just go with color, and then turn down its opacity a bit. I want it to be very subtle. So the sketch itself is very soft. It's not super high contrast. It's really about showing the line drawing more than anything. And then of course you could go back in and you could start detailing like I'm doing here. I'm adding little highlights on the top of those little louvers. You could do that throughout the entire rendering. So if I was gonna go tighter, that would be the next step. Zoom in, I'd put a layer on top and like I've done in previous tutorials and I would just start painting over the top of it, cleaning up everything. Um, 
you know, resolving the, the design, getting rid of the line drawing effectively. Now I'm checking the value of the background. Do I like it? It was a little too strong for me. Um, again, this was meant to be about the line drawing and just treat it like, it kind of has that feel like an old um, architectural, you know, watercolor washed line drawing, which I like those quite a bit. So that's kind of what it reminds me of. And there my mouse just freaked out and my image went off the page. Um, I did a little levels adjustment, just pushing the contrast a little bit right through the center. You can see I, I have a layer mask there where I've airbrushed into just to control through the focal point right through the middle of my rendering. And ultimately I barely have it uh, doing much of much of anything. And that's even a little too much contrast on the, the container there. That little chamfer on the corner to me looks like, like it's a stripe too much. So I'm just going to knock that back. So I applied a little layer mask and erased it out a bit. So that wraps it up. Um, quick value and quick colorization. I hope you found it helpful. Oh, there's a little hot spot right that wasn't put in when I did the background and because it's surrounded by a lot of dark value it looks overly hot which is drawing way too much attention so I added one last layer and I'm just knocking it back because um, that you're seeing through right to the other side to the background behind the vehicle so I had to push that back so it wasn't so visually important and a couple last touches on that and that'll do it so I hope you enjoyed it this week um, and I'll try to post again next Friday Thanks again for all the support, uh, greatly appreciated, and um, that keeps me doing them. So, hope you liked it, and give it a try. You know, you put a lot of time into doing a line drawing, let the line drawing show through, and, um, you know, be proud of that, and you can just really clean it up and make it a little more visually appealing without that much effort. Have a great week.